Ah, but wait, there's more. No, all jokes aside, I was, I was sitting there thinking about the Hydro Boost uh, system uh, and its complexity. And so I was gonna leave it with the last part of the video, just before this part, I was gonna leave it at that and move on to the next one. But then I thought, no, I should really do a video, part of this video where it's all finished, where everything is hooked up and it's done and go over the whole entire thing. Because my, my thinking of it is that you are taking the power steering system and the brake system and you're combining them somewhat together. Um, and so it is actually kind of complex because you're going from a system that was developed on a Ford Mustang by an OEM that they've put tons of engineering dollars in uh, back, back in the mid late nineties to develop the system. So um, converting it to this car is actually, it takes some time um, and it takes some, some special stuff. So I wanna go over the whole entire thing and kind of recap um, what you have to do to get this system um, hooked up. I don't even know if it works, but it's hooked up. So let me go over what all that took. Um, starts with taking off all of the metal lines. You wanna take off every metal line that was on this car, unless you're going to do what the manual says and adapt them to work with the car. I decided against that. I did not like the feeling of forcing those metal lines and bending them and, and I just didn't want to do that. That to me wasn't. So the other alternative to that is you now have to take all the metal lines off and convert everything over to fittings so that you can make your own high pressure lines. Keep that in mind too, high pressure lines. You need the ability to make a high pressure line and you have to get the right kinds of lines to do that because there is a difference. For the power steering system, you should be using PTFE lined lines. Um, that is what uh, my conclusion that I came up with. So you have to make sure you buy PTFE fittings and PTFE lines to make these. Then you also have low, low pressure lines. And those low pressure lines, you don't need the PTFE. You can use like, um, everybody has a different name brand for them, but AeroQuip calls them socketless. So I'm gonna go over this whole system and what I used and where I used it and why I use it that way. So, Hydro Boost unit here. I've converted it to fittings. So, let's go over the fittings here. We've got, this is a, uh, I think I have a 5 ace. No, and don't, some of the Hydro Boost units are gonna be different in terms of what fittings they require. But this one here, this is a 5 ace 18. I believe this is also a 5 ace 18. This is like a, um, 5 16 24. This is the odd one. This is a banjo fitting that I bought from that Hydrotech braking company. Um, these are the high pressure lines here. This one came with the kit. This one I made. Um, this one goes down to the pump. This one goes to the rack. Those fittings down there, I got, um, you can find them on Late Model Restoration. They are a kit that you get from Maximum Motorsports. Uh, okay, then I made these socketless lines. This socketless line goes to this T-fitting down here. That T-fitting, which I'm gonna put a zip tie in and kind of pull it up against the F panel there, um, is like a return back to the reservoir. You also have, coming out of the rack, another socketless, and this is my AFCO power steering cooler. Uh, this power steering cooler came ready for 6AN fittings. Uh, these here, um, bushings, I bought, I, I had thought, you know, a, I was trying to think of ways to mount this. The AFCO power steering cooler comes with like, you could put T-bolts in it and slide them in there. But I thought, wait, off-road racing and off-road shocks get mounted like a cooler that's exactly like that that just gets mounted. So I know they make bushings for that. So I found the bushings for that. I might put some clamps on right now. I just have zip ties holding it in place. That way I can make the lines, but I might end up getting clamps that are gonna hold that in place a little bit better. We'll see when I get to it. Uh, but anyway, that that's where it's mounted. And it's probably, you can kind of see from the front of the car, there's gonna be airflow hitting 
pretty much the majority of it if I mount it there. So that's good. And then it's right before it exits and goes back to um, the reservoir. So you need to install the cooler in between the rack and going back to the reservoir because that's what that fitting comes out there down or comes down out there and goes back to the T-fitting, back to this reservoir here. Uh, this power steering, because I, re I remote reservoired and uh, because this is a remote reservoir, I remounted it somewhere else and I bought, I'll show you here, this from O'Reilly. That's the part number 13501412. That is a 5 ace power steering line that comes 36 inches long. So you got plenty of room to cut that off. Uh, and it's black and it'll fit in nicely. And I just used the, the uh, clamps from the original line. Um, now, oh yeah, and I, like I said before, I made a little bracket that, that rib and riveted it, made it, goes to the F panel there. That's how I did that. Um, what else? Yeah, so to me, personally, when I tried to do the cooler the way that they want you to do it, uh, it didn't fit. And I don't understand. I, I did not understand. They don't have very good pictures. Uh, they, they want you to use these bolts here, bolt holes to mount it, but it doesn't reach both sides. I just, it was confusing. Plus you have this like weird, ugly tube on the front of your car now. So to me, um, I think this AFCO cooler, that's the next best way. Uh, it's, it's, it looks cool and it, it mounts way better. So there you go. That's why I did it. Uh, that's it. So that's it. That, that is converting everything over to the, everything's hooked up now. Um, does it work? I won't know until I fire the vehicle up and get everything pumping and turn the wheel and see how it's working. Um, but yeah, that's, that is initially, uh, how it's hooked up. Um, you can find diagrams online to see the routing of the, of the lines and stuff like that and see where everything goes. Um, yeah, it's pretty much it. It's, it's one of those projects on this car that you, if you get to it, it's going, and you've never dealt with that before. Uh, it's going to make you feel like you're, um, like you're at a, a dead end. Um, but if you pe if you break it down into the pieces and you start, you know, Summit has all the fittings, Hydrotech braking, you can even go through, through all the fittings. Um, I went to them for the more specialized fitting. But Summit has a lot of stuff, especially the AeroQuip socketless stuff. You just type in the part numbers and they'll pop up and you can order them and they show up like the next day. So it's a, it's a good, easy way. Um, also make sure to get yourself, if you've never built high pressure lines or any of these fitting lines or the socketless fittings, make sure to get yourself some aluminum uh, vice jaw um, liners here. Because you can put those... Some of the fittings are aluminum, and if you put them and try to hold them with anything else, especially steel, uh, it's gonna mar and, and, and really kind of mess it up. So make sure to get yourself some aluminum, but you could probably make some of these, but these were $11 on Summit, uh, and they ma have magnets on them, and it sticks them to the, um, to the steel vise. And then when you're putting the tube on, you can hold it in place. You can even hold, it's got a piece down the middle here where you can put the line in and you can hold it and you can push on it and you can tighten the fittings uh, for the ones that need the tightening. And then for the socketless, you can just push them on. Uh, so just a super easy way to do it. Just do it that way. Um, yeah, so that's it. It's a complex system. You got to convert it over if you want it to work. Um, but that's it. There you go. All right, and just when you think that's it, there's even more. So I had the, if you see down here, where the power steering cooler is mounted. Now on this down tube of the X, I had it over here on this one, but when I went to go put the uh, lower coolant line on, it made it so I couldn't turn that down. So now that I have it there on the other one, I can turn it down. So just keep that in mind, is that it will interfere, possibly, if you mount it to the, um, the you know, the, the X starting from the passenger side going down to the driver's side versus the 
starting from the driver's side going down to the passenger side. So I just had to remake the lines and, but yeah, just keeping that in mind. And that should be it for now. Um, the coolant stuff I'll go over in another video, but those two systems kind of are at the same time in the manual. So that's why they kind of interfered with each other. So the cooling system, let me uh, run you through what I've done so far. Uh, this is the stock 4.6 liter radiator. Uh, it, these little um, square pieces of tubing on top is what I've initially bolted it to. They tell you to leave the bottom um, unmounted and zip tie it. So that's what I've done. Um, I've put on the upper uh, radiator kind of shroud piece uh, that attaches the overflow coolant tank. This is the overflow tank from the Mustang. Uh, and I've drilled out. I still need to put the rear support on there, which attaches down to the X brace at some point. I'll do that. Um, but I still need to finish riveting that. I got to paint this and everything. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. Then I've attached the uh, cooling hoses. So you have the upper hose here, comes from the side here, makes a pretty tight turn, goes through. Uh, the front of the F panel there, and then over to the uh, thermostat housing. They say to mount it or to put it in line filler. And they talk about it like it's in the kit. Mine doesn't come with one. And I looked on the inventory, it doesn't have it. So I don't know. I don't know. My kit just didn't come with it. So I had to order one. Not that expensive. You can find them on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, the one they sell found one on, I think Breeze Automotive was like 93 bucks. A little bit, I mean, I guess it's a little nicer, but I'm, um, the $20 ones I'm gonna try first. Uh, and I'm gonna mount it, I think, right here. So I'm gonna use this um, connector, and I'm just gonna add the filler neck here. I ordered a short one, and I ordered a long one, so we'll see which one I wanna use better, which one fits. And then I'm just gonna add another one of these here. Um, they say to mount it as high as possible, so that's pretty much the highest point in my coolant cooling system is right there. Uh, if I have to, I'll mount it here, but I think, you know, at least somewhere along in here will be good. Then I have the bottom um, hose here, which goes under the part of the X brace. I made it so that it doesn't tuck down far enough to get caught on anything. Um, and like I said in the previous video, I moved my uh, cooler so that it doesn't interfere with that either. And then that stinks up. The only thing I'm concerned about is it gets very close to the supply line for the reservoir there, um, the pump supply. Uh, so, but I don't think that should be a problem. It touches the rubber, not the metal. So I think that should be good. Um, now, this is the next part that's kind of a little bit. So I'm running a Ron Francis chassis harness, which has this fan connector. My guy who dieted the harness and if I would go back I'd answer it differently but he asked me are you running the stock fan at that point I should have said yes because he would have left the connector but that makes it so that the computer will then control the fan which might not be the way you want it in the end if you want the computer to control the fan then leave it if you're doing the 4.6 if not then you got to hook up your the fan that comes, this is the fan that comes with the kit. It's just a 16 inch basic fan with that same connector on the end. Um, so my, I was going through how to mount it. So what I did was I cut out this, this is the stock fan. And then I cut out this, which is part of the shroud. And then these are the five liter mounts to route, mount into the five liter shroud. So I'm gonna try to adapt. So my thought is to cut these off as tabs and then I'll mount it and screw it to this and see. Um, this thing's only like 20 bucks. I found one on eBay, so and mine's kind of broken. So I might, we'll see. I might just run it like this, see how it goes. If not, Breeze Automotive makes an aluminum shroud. Um, this isn't that expensive, so. But I'm gonna try this first. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But other than that, yeah, there you go. 
that's it for now for the cooling system. Uh, another update after this. So let me show you what I've done to make, to convert the fan that comes, 16 inch fan that comes in the kit to run the, so you can run it on a separate switch, not with a computer, uh, into the fan shroud that goes um, on the 96 Mustang radiator. Uh, so it's kind of keeping it a little simple because um, the mounting of the fan on the radiator, plus it's, it's the fan shroud that was on the radiator to begin with. So what I did was, is I cut the uh, ends off of the brackets that come with the kit for the five liter um, that I'm guessing mount, looks like in the manual that the, those brackets mounted to the fan shroud on the five liter Mustang. Um, so they can span, I guess they're big enough to span across. Uh, so I cut the ends off because the ends are, are bent with like a press brake or something like that. Uh, and then I drilled holes so because they give you eight screws so I put one screw on one side and then I tabbed it pretty much so it's kind of held on there with tabs so you can see that kind of and it's a 16 inch fan and then that way it has no obstruction coming through the fan shroud there and it's completely sealed and then I fixed the top here with some 100 mile an hour tape and we'll just kind of see if that works. And like you see here, you got the connector that plugs into the connector here. So that's what I did for that.